Let me share a story with you. When Angela Merkel became Chancellor of Germany, she asked me to come to Berlin in the first few weeks of her government to address the important question, how do we grow the German economy in the 21st century? When I got to Berlin, the first question I asked the Chancellor is, Madam Chancellor, how do you grow the German economy or the European Union economy, or for that matter, the global economy in the last stages of an energy era? The great industrial revolution based on fossil fuels is now sunsetting. The price of oil, coal, gas, and other fossil fuels are becoming more expensive. The technologies based on those fossil fuels, like the internal combustion engine, are now exhausted. They have no more multiplier effect. And the entire civilization made out of fossil fuels is now on life support. This problem is compounded by climate change now. Real-time climate change is now affecting agriculture and infrastructure. The result is the price of oil and other goods and services are going up. Unemployment is continuing to rise. We're moving deeper into debt, and we have a civilization in the throes of a crisis. What do we do? We need a new economic vision for the world that's compelling. We need a new economic game plan for the world that's deliverable. We have to move off carbon-based fossil fuels in 30 years. And this new plan has to move as quickly in the developing nations as in the developed world. So we need to step back and ask the question, how do the great economic revolutions in history occur? That'll give us a roadmap. The great economic revolutions occur when two things come about. First, we change the way we organize energy. Now, we've had various energy regimes through history, New energy regimes make possible more complex civilizations. They allow us to bring more people together, differentiate skills, integrate them in larger social and economic units. But the complexity of new energy regimes then require new communication revolutions to manage them. It's when communication revolutions merge and converge with energy revolutions that we change economic history, we change society. For example, in the 19th century, we went from manual print presses to steam-powered presses. We could mass-produce printing material very cheaply. Then we introduced public schools in Europe and America, and we created a print literate workforce with the communication skills to manage a very complex, steam-driven, coal-powered first industrial revolution. We couldn't have managed it with an illiterate workforce. In the 20th century, we had another convergence of communication and energy, a second industrial revolution. Centralized electricity, the telephone, and later radio and television became the communication media to manage a dispersed auto and oil era and a mass consumer society. Now, clearly, that second industrial revolution is on life support. Again, the energies are more expensive, the technologies are sunsetting, the infrastructure is collapsing. We are now, however, on the cusp of a new convergence of communication and energy, a third industrial revolution. The internet is a powerful new communication medium. And what's so interesting about the internet is it's very different than the communication I grew up on in the 20th century, top-down, centralized communication, one-to-many, television, radio. What's interesting about the internet is it's the way it's organized. It's distributed and collaborative. So today, 2.3 billion human beings can send their own video, audio, and text to each other at the same time, distributed and collaborative, with far more lateral power than all of the centralized television networks of the 20th century. This distributed collaborative internet revolution, this communication media, is just now beginning to merge in Europe with a new energy regime, distributed energy. And with distributed IT, and internet technology managed distributed energy, we have a powerful third industrial revolution that could allow us to regrow the global economy, maintain a sustainable planet, and mitigate climate change. What are distributed energies? Well, let me compare them to elite energies. Coal, oil, natural gas, they're elite energies for the simple reason 
they're, they're not found in our backyards. They're only found in a few places in the world and they require huge military investments to secure them, huge geopolitical investments to manage them and massive capital to organize them from the wellhead to the final user. So make no mistake about it, coal, oil, gas, the fossil fuels are the most expensive elite energies in history. They're now sunsetting. What are distributed energies? Distributed energies are energies that are found in our backyard. They're found in every square inch of the world. The sun shines all over this planet every day. The wind blows across the earth 24 hours a day. Underneath the ground, we have a hot geothermal core of energy ready to be converted to our uses. In the agricultural areas, we have agricultural waste and forestry waste that can be converted overnight to energy. If you live in the coastal areas, the ocean tides, the ocean waves are coming in every day, another source of energy. Wherever we have garbage, we can anaerobically convert it back to energy overnight. We have enough of these distributed energies to provide for our species until kingdom comes. The European Union has committed itself to a five-pillar infrastructure to create a powerful new third industrial revolution that can transform Europe and hopefully the world. I was privileged to develop this plan for the European Union. It was endorsed by the European Parliament in 2007. This plan is now moving through the various agencies of the European Commission and in the member states. Pillar one, the EU has committed itself to 20% renewable energy by 2020. That means a third of the electricity of the Europe has to be green electricity by that time. Pillar two, how do we collect distributed renewable energies? Buildings. We have 191 million buildings in the EU, homes, offices, and factories. The goal is to convert every one of these buildings to your own personal green micro power plant. So you can collect solar electricity on your roof with your solar panels, collect wind off the side of the walls for green electricity, take the geothermal heat underneath the building and convert it back to energy, take the garbage in the building and convert it back to energy. Turn every building into your own personal power plant. Pillar three, we have to store these energies because they're intermittent. The sun isn't always shining. Sometimes the wind's blowing at night, you need the electricity during the day. So we're going to have to store these energies, and we're for all storage technologies, flywheels, batteries, capacitors, water pumping. But we put most of our emphasis on hydrogen as a storage medium to store this energy. Just like media is stored in digital, renewable energy is stored by hydrogen. So when the sun hits your roof, you collect a little electricity with your solar panel. If you have some surplus you're not using, you take that surplus electricity, put it in water. Hydrogen comes out of the water into a tank. When the sun isn't shining on your roof, convert that hydrogen right back to electricity. A small thermodynamic loss. That's pillar three. Pillar four is where the communication revolution converges with the new energy revolution to create a third industrial revolution. We take off the shelf internet technology and we convert the entire electricity grid of Europe to an electricity internet that acts exactly like the internet. So when millions of buildings are collecting their own green electricity on site, storing it in hydrogen like we store media in digital, and then if you don't need some of that electricity during the day, your software can direct you to sell that electricity across an electricity internet from the Irish Sea to the doorsteps of Russia, just like we now create our own information and share it online. Pillar five, plug-in transport. Electric vehicles are out this year. Uh, fuel cell cars, trucks, and buses are out in 2014. We'll be able to plug in all of our vehicles anywhere on the grid where there's green electricity. There'll be power charging units on every street corner, and you'll be able to buy electricity from the grid when your car's parked, or even sell your own electricity back to the grid if the price is right. These five pillars together create a new mega technology platform. They are a high-tech, smart infrastructure for a third industrial revolution. This third industrial revolution is power to the people, the democratization of energy. The music industry didn't understand file sharing of music. When millions of young people began to create software to share music together, the music companies thought it was a joke. Then they became terrified, then they went out of business. Similarly, the newspapers really didn't understand the blogosphere, the idea of millions of people sharing news and information together. Now the newspapers are either going out of business or they're creating their own blogs. 
As powerful as this internet revolution has been, this democratization of information, it's only half the story. When the internet communication revolution begins to converge with the new distributed energies, we have the second half of the story, a powerful third industrial revolution that's gonna transform society. We are in the midst of a crisis. This crisis, however, creates an enormous opportunity. If we can begin to phase in this third industrial revolution, it'll allow us to mitigate climate change, replenish the planet, regrow our economy in a sustainable manner, and provide opportunity and hope for generations not yet here. This is our moment. We have no choice. We have to mobilize our full talents and resources to this task at hand. We have to move off a carbon-based economy. We have to usher in a third industrial revolution. We have to share energy across this planet. We have to have power to the people.